right? We have less value in women. So women are here and men are here. That's again about that boy, if his game is falling, if he's not playing up the par, the coach says he's playing like a girl, puts him down here, he's not feeling that, pick his game right back up to try to get back here. So for example, John is already lost, all right? So he's lost. What does that mean? That means his man box card is already in jeopardy because he's not supposed to be lost. He's supposed to know where he's going. You know, when he shows up, he rarely will show up and say, I got lost. He'll show up and say, I had a flat. But he won't show up and say, I got lost because he ain't supposed to get lost. So he's here, so his man box card is in jeopardy. Now, when he gets out the car at the gas station, if he goes over and asks the woman for direction, technically, John, what you define as instinct, and his in, in, instinct can very well be a gut reaction, right? Your gut says to you, I already feel like crap. Now I'm going to go over there and ask her for directions. I got to go all the way down here. Can you believe it? I got to ask a woman how to get where I need to go. That's what you call instinct. All right, and you don't go ask her. Instead, I'm gonna cut this off right here. I'm gonna ask a man, all right? I'm gonna ask a man, and I'm gonna get right back now. Some of y'all might be saying, Tony, please give us a break. If I give you another example. You're on basketball team, this is everybody in the room. You're on basketball team A, playing against basketball team B, who you could be any day of the week, and you usually do. But on this day, they're giving you a sound whoop in front of your fans who are upset with you. They're actually laughing at you because they know they really can't beat you. And it's all because of one play that's messing everything up. The coach calls a timeout. And he's done something that's actually inappropriate. We get in a huddle, and he gives us permission to give it to this guy. Let him have it, verbally, let him have it. Now, I want you to think of three names we would call him. Don't say any of them out loud. Please don't put them in the room. Just think of three names we would call him in that huddle. And just like that, you got three. All right? It doesn't take long. All right? And John, I'm surprised at you because I can see inside your head those names. Christian man like yourself. <laughs> All right. Okay, what we would guarantee you is the three names you got in your head are derogatory, disrespectful, and in some cases, even dehumanizing names we use in association with women and gay men. Derogatory, disrespectful, and in some cases, even dehumanizing names we use, two out of three, if not three out of three. Names we use in association with women and gay men. We put gay men down here with women, because this man box thing, while gay men are without a doubt are men and have their own stuff like just like men. But this man box thing is very much the way heterosexual men in not in its entirety, but particularly in respect to violence against women. So gay men, heterosexual men put gay men in the same place, which is why those names you just came up in your head are names you use in association with women and gay men. It all speaks to being less than, all right? So whatever we're telling him that he's playing like, all speaks to being less than, again, making that connection between us and them. Why are we stuck? Okay, so this is what's in the box. Help me out. I'm gonna ask the women actually to help me out and break down how men would view being outside the box. So outside the box. Women, men would say a man who's outside the box is a man Who's what? Sensitive. Weak, sensitive, <laughs> vulnerable. 
So I could just stand here, I don't even have to move. And the women are just let it fly. But the guys, I gotta limp up and down the aisle, <laughs> point to you, encourage you to speak. What else, women? What, what, what do men say being out the box is? Feminine. Is that what you said? Feminine. Artistic. Excuse me? Artistic. Um, artistic, yes. Emotional, yes. All these things that we fight so hard to stay in the box, not to be connected with, all right? Let's take this young man, for example, all right? Let's say, how about you, sir? He looks too old to be your son. Might give you a little bit that you don't deserve. But let's say he was, let's say he's about 13, let's say he's your son, all right? You don't want to have 13 or something? Yeah. yeah? So anyway, because he actually looks a little bit like him. Uh, that's your son. That's a normal experience for him. Getting harassed. The guys don't usually beat him up. You know why they don't beat him up? Because they don't have to. They just harass him and bully him all the time. What's your job? What's your thing about you? Yeah. Yeah. What's your job? As his dad. Encourage him to be strong. Encourage him to be strong. Does, does that mean fight back? Or what, what do you mean by strength? Emotional strength, yes. Emotional strength, which might mean to stand up, right? Does it mean to fight back physically? Not in your opinion. So you encourage him to be strong, emotionally strong. And, and not succumb to the pressure. To not succumb to the pressure. And let's say he's not capable of doing that. What do you do then? I would suggest that he tell. Suggest that? That he tell. Like, that he inform. Inform us. All right. Okay. <laughs> now, get help. Get help. All right. Now, in that situation, while we're looking at Pierre's son, men in general, they began to form an opinion of Pierre. Right? Now, not here in this room, but that's how we do as men. If that's Pierre's son, then something must be wrong with Pierre. Am I wrong? That's how men think. Because he's supposed to be tough enough to handle this to some degree, and Pierre's supposed to teach him if he ain't. So they're both messed up. That's how we're taught to think as men. Because I appreciate so much the responses that Pierre just gave. But that's not how we generally operate as men. Give you an example. Kendall was six years old, had his first fist fight kid next door named Javin. Now, I told you I'm from New York City. Tammy and I, we moved just a little ways upstate. I know you think upstate, you think Rochester or Buffalo. If you live in New York City, you just got to go outside the city, and that's called upstate New York. I live about an hour and a half outside the city. So we go up there with that whole white picket fence thing, get out of the city, raise the kids, yard, and all of that. So my kids don't know anything about the city, you know? They visit the city just like a tourist. They don't know anything. You know, Kendall talks, he says things like, oh man, that was awesome. I kind of look at him, I said, awesome? I look at my wife, Tammy, I said, did he say awesome? She said, yeah. I said, well, don't we say cool? She said, no, we don't say cool anymore. We say awesome. All right, cool, it's awesome. So my kids, uh, doing their thing, right? But they don't know, they don't come from places where I grew up, and I don't want them to, 